All right. Thanks for joining us here at Everyone Has a Story. We're joined with uh, one of my friends, Goff. He's been on the show many times, and we're glad to have him back. Um, he's, uh, he's got a brand new video out, and uh, he's here just to talk a little bit about that. So, Goff, my friend, how are you doing? Hey, I'm doing great. Thanks so much for having me back on the show tonight. Absolutely. It's always a pleasure to talk to you. We always have a great conversation. So I always look forward to uh, having you on the show. So uh, tell me just a little bit about your new video that you've released. What's the name of it? Absolutely. So yeah, we, we've got a brand new film out called the Melanie Holden interview. So basically uh, about four years ago, we did uh, seven episodes of like a, a mock chat show kind of series. And uh, with all the uh, restrictions that have been happening, I had to sort of come up with a bit of a, a plan to, because uh, I couldn't do, you know, any kind of uh, big scale productions need to tone it down a bit. And these chat shows are reasonably sure. straightforward to film. So I thought, well, why don't we, uh, why don't we revisit that format and go back and do uh, episode eight, maybe an episode nine and even maybe even episode 10. So uh, at the moment we're just on episode eight. So yeah, we just released, the Melanie Holden interview, which is the eighth installment in our uh, chat show, uh, fake chat show series. Well, tell me a little bit uh, about some of the uh, the past uh, fake interviews that you've had. What exactly were were those? Uh, what, what were contained in those ones? Yeah, absolutely. So uh, basically, uh, what I do is I sort of get a uh, a type of celebrity. So, for example, we've got Robbie Pockets, who's like a fake pop star. And then we've got uh, Anne Handel, who's like a, a TV soap actress. And then we've got uh, Joe Staines, who's a supermodel. And we've got one with a politician and one with a, a fake psychic. So I always try to get like a fake celebrity profession and then just make fun of that to uh, the most extent that I possibly can. So that's pretty much the, uh, the okay. premise behind all of them. And uh, the Melanie Holden interview is a little bit different because I wanted to do something a little bit more obscure with this one. So it's a little bit, uh, a little, it starts off in that sort of fashion, but then takes a, a fairly severe left-hand turn. Right. Well, I mean, it was interesting. Excuse me, got to get a drink there. Um, it, it was interesting how you started off with the, uh, with the, with a mother and daughter and you kind of took that, that idea of, um, usually the mother being a kind of a controlling individual. I mean, that's very stereotypical and the daughter having to, to put up with that kind of nonsense. And you kind of turn that on its ear just a little bit, which I appreciated. It was, it was pretty funny. Um, the, the one thing that I, was kind of struck me was the green screen in the background that didn't have anything on it. Oh, no, well, we're, uh, we, we were on a, a film set. So, you know, it's, uh, it's just uh, on the lunch okay. break of the film set. So, you know, that, gotcha, yeah, gotcha. that was done on purpose. So, yeah. Okay. All right. And of course, since, uh, since these two individuals were, uh, you know, I guess, as they said, pretty boring, you, you cut to a, a cafe scene and, and that's kind of, I don't know, it was interesting. So tell me just a little bit about your thought process when you come up with that whole, the whole scene there. Well, yeah. So it actually, it's kind of funny in that uh, I say in the film, well, I suppose I'll have to come up with something else. And that was the truth. Cause kind of uh, the joke with the, uh, the, child actress and the mother that joke had sort of run its course there was nowhere left really to go with that and obviously it wasn't long enough for a full episode so I genuinely did need to have to come up with something else so uh, I wanted to do something a little bit obscure something that uh, people probably wouldn't be expecting a little bit more thoughtful and so yeah so we've sure. got eight different scenes in the cafe which uh, essentially it's the same conversation but had different ways so it's kind of like the same but different to sort of point out that uh, dependent on uh, your attitude and the way you approach a situation and your circumstances, I guess, that, you know, a conversation can be had, you know, a hundred different ways depending on a whole range of variables, I suppose, but mainly the way you approach it. Yeah. Yeah, well, it was interesting. And, and I did appreciate the fact that at one point you throw in two completely different characters and kind of throw the whole thing for a loop. That was interesting. That was good. Well, you know, they, they were stealing their scene, which is just not acceptable. Yeah, <laughs> well, absolutely. That's exactly right. Uh, yeah, I mean, it's so folks, let me just tell you, it is a very entertaining video. Uh, it's fun to watch. Um, like I said, there was an interesting part, at least for me, I was like, okay, what happened here? <laughs> but maybe I, I just had to, you know, uh, I got to be on the level of goth. And maybe that was my problem right there. <laughs> no, no, no. I well, I, I'm kind of glad that uh, you had that reaction because it's, it's sort of, that's kind of really what I'm going for. I want people to sit there and go, wow, that was interesting. I might have to scratch my head and have a bit of a think about this. Because as you know, Nate, my stuff's usually more of the, uh, 
the outrageous kind of variety. And so it was, yeah. uh, it was nice to do something a bit different that uh, people probably aren't a hundred percent expecting. So uh, it was kind of nice to, you know, throw a bit of a curveball in there. Well, and I did appreciate it. I mean, like you said, uh, conversations can be had uh, a multiple of different ways and it could be the exact same conversation, but, but depending on, like you said, your attitude, uh, the situation, who's actually talking, uh, things can change. And so it was interesting to hear that same dialogue really for the most part, but done in different ways uh, with the different person or with a different attitude. So it was, as you said, it was thoughtful and I will have to go back and watch the video again and maybe just take it in a couple of more times. Yeah, no, absolutely. Absolutely. Yeah. Cause like I say, yeah, yeah, it's sort of the same, but different. So it was really important when we filmed it. Like I had to rehearse Kale and Rebecca who did a wonderful job. I had to rehearse them quite a lot because obviously they've got to be, you know, there's subtleties in how they deliver their lines to make it different, you know, because you can say the same sentence, but if you say it, you know, with the, with more of a sarcastic tone, then it takes on a whole different meaning. So, you know, that's the kind right. of, uh, that's the kind of vibe. So, yeah. So it, uh, it always, and also the other thing too was uh, that was important to me was to make sure that it wasn't always the guy being mean or the girl being mean, that it was sort of yeah. an equal, uh, equal distribution of, uh, of, of being an asshole basically. <laughs> Well, I think you distributed ev uh, pretty evenly. That was good. No, I mean, <laughs> it, was, it was good. So, so tell me, were you working on um, maybe something else before, uh, you know, this whole virus thing hit? Yeah, yeah, yeah. Or so, was this yeah, it came at a, we'll see, yeah, so it's quite interesting, actually. So it, it came at a bad time because we were in the middle of pre-production on a film. And so we had to shut that down, obviously. And so I still had access to a recording studio, though. So, uh Australia was in a pretty heavy lockdown for about eight weeks. And so over that eight weeks, I still had, like I say, access to a recording studio. So I went through all my files and I got out uh, what I thought would work as audio downloads because Beer Nuts Productions also does some audio files. And so I went into the recording studio with some actors and we put down those audio tracks and put them up on the Beer Nuts Productions website. So I was able to sort of keep it going. And then once restrictions eased enough that we could film again, it still wasn't enough that we could sort of pick things back up. So like I said earlier, I was like, well, what can I do? And then uh, I thought, well, we've got the chat show TV series. Why don't we just, uh, why don't we just go with that? So yeah, I, I was, because uh, you have to adapt. I mean, you've got no choice. I can't just yeah. sit still and do nothing. So yeah, I was lucky that, like I've told you before, you know, I make sure that I keep and save all of the work that I do. And so because of that, I had those audio tracks I was able to record down and put up on the website. And then uh, the idea came to me to do a few more episodes of the chat show series. So that's, uh, that's what I've done. Cause I honestly didn't think that after I finished that seventh episode of the chat show about four years ago, I'm like, right, that's done. I've squeezed every bit of funny I can out of that particular format. That's all I've got. But uh, you know, four years later I revisited and I came up with a few new different characters I could talk to. So yeah, it's funny how things like that can happen as well. Right, right, for sure. So um, how are things going um, in Australia? Are things loosening up and will you be able to, you know, maybe go back to, to shooting more of what, uh, you know, your normal videos or what? Yeah, so like I say, we were on a heavy lockdown for about eight weeks, but we didn't have it uh, that bad to begin with. So it was pretty easy to sort of get rid of, if that makes sense. So um, yeah. Uh, well, so, somebody needs to tell that to the United States, <laughs> anyway. <laughs> yeah, I know you, you poor guys are getting it really, really bad. We see on the yeah. news it's terrible, but um, yeah, we, we uh, yeah, so for about eight weeks we were under heavy lockdown, and then they've done uh, stages, so like there's stage one, two, three, and then normal, and so at the moment we're on stage three, and so the next stage to go is back to normal, so there's still a few little restrictions here and there, but uh, for the most part, you can sort of live your life. I mean, there's still no, uh, you know, um, what's an example I can give? I think there's like a hundred people allowed in restaurants and there's like, uh, uh, sure. like, like uh, health clubs and stuff. Again, like 80 people to a gym and things like that. So, I mean, gyms rarely have 80 no. people in them anyway. So that's what I mean. So for, <laughs> yeah, right. for the most this time of year, I know, yeah. So for the most part, it's back to normal. Like, I mean, there's still no, you know, you can't go out to concerts or to, like movie theaters have opened right. again and stuff like that, but uh, you can't go out to like concerts and like football stadiums. You can only have half capacity and all that sort of stuff. So there's still a few restrictions, but for the most part, we are back to normal, which is very, very good. 
What about masks? You guys having to wear masks, or you guys got a big controversy about that at all? Or? No, no, because like, like I say, that it wasn't uh, that bad to begin with. So, uh, yeah, we uh, once once it sort of got kind of bad, they put us all on a reasonably heavy lockdown, and so right. there was sort of no need to wear a mask because you're in your house. So, <laughs> so <laughs> well, yeah, that's great. yeah. So yeah. yeah, so so I mean, it was optional. I mean, some people you'd walk around when you go to get groceries and stuff, and there were some folks that were, and that's fine, and some folks that weren't. That, yeah. That's that's cool as well. But because it wasn't big in the community, uh, you know, right. it, it really it wasn't a huge deal. So yeah. Well, I, I, I to me it's weird because again, it's the United States, and here we are in this atmosphere where a mask has become political. In fact, right now, uh, the city that I live in, they're actually having their town hall meeting right now, trying to decide whether or not they should make it mandatory for those of us living in the city to wear them out in public and whatnot so i'm just like whatever i it just it's mind-boggling to me that the united states has to be like a whiny little baby half the time can we just all get along i don't know well anyway yeah, I, um, I, 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 I do agree with you i mean there's some things that uh, where you know politics need to be taken out of the equation and just uh, basic common sense should be put in the equation you know you just yeah. gotta worry yeah. forget about party lines and just go with what is uh, you know common sense you know what i'm saying so yeah well it, yeah in my 46 years of existence, I never thought I'd see the day where a mask became something, you know, political. It's just crazy. I, I did see, but, I did see on Instagram though, which I quite liked because I like Conan O'Brien. I find him very funny, and uh, yeah. I think uh, I could be wrong. So forgive me if I am, but I have a feeling that he's selling uh, novelty face masks, like with funny phrases on them, because. Uh, Oh, probably. Either he was doing it for real or it's just a, a segment and I, I misunderstood because I was just flicking through Instagram. So I might have misunderstood. But if he is selling comedy novelty face masks, see, I could get behind wearing them any time of the day. Oh, so, yeah. Sure. I could do. Yeah. I mean, you know what? And that's the thing is like, you know, if you're going to, if we have to wear them, you know what? Might as well make a buck, that's, right? That's the capitalist way. Yeah. Make a buck, Alpha. Well, and make it <laughs> do fun. What you, can. you know, make it fun. Yeah, you know, sure. Why, why must everything be so serious and, uh, and and uptight? Why can't that's we right. have a bit of fun once in a while? You know what I'm saying? Absolutely, absolutely. So um, how long has this video, this new video of yours been out? Yeah, so uh, it only got released last week. So uh, it's hot off the press. So yeah, it's on the uh, TV page of the Beer Nuts Productions website because uh, I sort of classify it as the TV series. So, uh, yeah, so okay. obviously we've got the movies up there, we've got the audio downloads, and we've got the, the TV section, which has all the uh, now eight episodes of the chat show. And hopefully uh, there'll be an episode nine and an episode 10 coming up in the next few months. So uh, people need to okay. uh, stay tuned for those two as well. Okay, so have you already started working on the scripts for those? Yeah, the or? scripts are done. So we're in uh, pre-production oh. for episode nine. And then... Uh, it depends on uh, sales and all that sort of stuff to how quickly we can do episode 10. But yeah, they're written and ready to go. So yeah, so uh, fingers crossed we can get them out reasonably quickly. So uh, obviously, as always, uh, everybody needs to jump on the Beer Nuts Productions website and get uh, get busy downloading. Yeah. Do you recommend they start at uh, the first one then of these TV series and, and moving up? Yeah, well, we've also, of course you do. Yeah, so you yeah, yeah, of course. Well, we've also got a, a bundle <laughs> package. So you can buy them all as, a, as okay. a bundle package all in one go. So you can either watch them individually or you can uh, download them as a big bundle package. So it's up to, up to you guys, really, what you want to do. But if you, you can watch one, watch the new one, the Melanie Holden interview. And if, uh, if that tickles your funny bone, then uh, you can... Uh, have a look at the others but of course there's trailers and everything up there as well so people can check out uh, the trailers to see what they all uh, what they're all about and what they all look like and all that sort of stuff as well so yeah well that sounds great um so yeah folks go ahead and uh, check out beer nut what's it, what's the website again God? yeah beernutsproductions.com so you drink a beer eat some nuts and uh, hopefully watch some humorous productions sounds perfect thanks god for coming on the show truly appreciate it uh, folks, go check out his website. He's got some fantastic material on there. Um, if you like to laugh, uh, especially with a little bit of just, uh, what have I said in the past? I mean, it's just, it's got that hint of like uh, cringe factor. I don't know how to say it, but it's great. It's not so much where you just want to shut it off. It's just enough where you kind of wince and you go, okay, that's funny. Well, that's, that's the best way I know how to do it. Like I said, I, I do like to sort of go towards the outrageous side of the, uh, the spectrum. So, yeah. and, and look, like I've said to you earlier, I do enjoy pushing those boundaries. I like to sort of get as close to the line as I possibly can. I find that uh, a fun thing to do. 
Well, and I, honestly, that's the best. That's where comedy happens is right there in that line. So. Yeah, well, it's a, I saw an interview once with George Carlin, the famous comedian, and he said something which I really liked. He said, uh, I like taking people right to the line, then pushing them over, and then being pleased that I did. And I kind of I kind of <laughs> dig that, you know? I like that sort of thing. So I kind of like to think of it the yeah. same way. I like taking people right to the line, then maybe just pushing them a little bit over, but then, then them being pleased that I did push them over, you know? Because, uh, yeah, so I, I dig that a lot. Well, there you go. And folks, if you can't, if you like that kind of humor, if you like to be pushed over the line and maybe over, go check out Goff's website, beernutsproductions.com. Is that correct? Absolutely, my man. Sweet, Goff. Thank you so much for joining me on the show. Look forward to speaking to you when your next one comes out. Absolutely. Thank you so much, Nate. Really appreciate your time. Thanks. You betcha. Thank you.